Scene three, inside Brutus's tent a few minutes later, so it's just immediately after. Um, this is a big scene where we get to see those grievances. We get to see why Cassius is upset at Brutus. We get to see Brutus defend what he did and what he said. So look at that, okay? They have a fight. They almost come to blows at one point. But look what saves them from doing that. And then ultimately, they plan their war and battle, and they have strategy for and against doing something. Look at that and understand who wants to do what and for what reason. I think it's easy to figure out, but those are just several things that you need to keep an eye on uh, for this particular scene. This is the last big scene of the entire play. Everything from here on out is just boom, boom, boom. So this is all of the battle plans, and then Act 5 is going to be the wars, So uh, or war. So that's something that we need to uh, make sure we understand the motivation for fighting now or waiting it out, that type of thing. So uh, follow along, Act 3, Scene 3. Scene 3, Act 4, Scene 3, Brutus's tent a few minutes later. Uh, as you recall, uh, Brutus and Cassius uh, had a brief little uh, interaction outside their tent. Uh, immediately upon Cassius dismounting from his horse or or for the purpose of the play just walking in um, and uh, you know pretty much uh, Brutus was saying hey you're upset at me I don't know why I'm kind of feeling you know that there are issues here as well but let's not let the troops see us fight we need to be a unified front and I think that that's a concept that's pretty easy to uh, follow and, and comprehend um, you know, taking it, you know, nowadays, present day, it's, I think I use the, the, uh, the analogy of, you know, we don't want to see mom and dad fight. Don't let the kids see mom and dad fight. In essence, that's the same thing here. We don't want the, the troops to see that the parents are squabbling. They need to be unified so that the troops are unified. Um, because in essence, this is civil war. Okay, this is a, 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 a fracture of, of Rome and of the country um, where um, Brutus and Cassius have amassed an army, and Antony and Lepidus have, and Octavius, they, they have their army and armies, and they're, they're combined. So this is a civil war, similar to what, uh, you know, America's war, uh, war was, uh, not necessarily what it was fought for, but, um, you know, fighting for uh, control of the country and what they think, um, you know, who should be in charge and that type of thing. Um, and so, anyways, that's uh, the bit of background. Remember, always go back just one page. If you ever take a break from Shakespeare for a day or an hour, just go back, oh yeah, that's what it was. And, and uh, it, it really is very, very helpful instead of just starting cold. Um, you know, that's just very, that's something that hopefully you'll take from this class with you um, that will help you out. Um, good, so we pretty much have this, this altercation and there is no violence. There's a mild little implied threat of violence but it's just verbal back and forth. And it's so important because remember what Cassius thought and felt about Brutus. Yes, it was always he had ulterior motives. If I can only get Brutus. Oh, Brutus, you're the most noble person, blah, 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 blah. Brutus is a noble person, and, and they were friends and acquaintances. Okay, and that over, and we've said that this is now two years after that assassination. Brutus had said in the last scene that you have described a hot friend coolly. So imagine a, a hot beverage is slowly cooling and, and it loses that intensity and fire and that love and friendship. And so there are reasons for that and hopefully, as I said in the intro uh, to the scene, I hope you're able to, to pick those up um, and we'll see that here in just a moment. Um, Cassius starts off right off the bat with it. Um, that you wronged me doth appear in this. And he holds up a letter. You have condemned and noticed, noted, noted Lucius Pella for taping, br taking bribes here of the Sardinians, where in my letters praying on his side because I knew him was slighted off. He was still punished. So there was somebody here that was in trouble for taking bribes, and you punished him, even though I sent you a personal letter asking for leniency and forgiving. It's kind of like nowadays if somebody gets in trouble, but they know somebody, a higher up, a, a politician, says, oh, look the other way. Okay, well, we will get rid of the speeding ticket then. You know, you were pulling strings. And Brutus didn't want to do that because Brutus is an honorable man. Mark Anthony was not lying when he was saying that. He is a very noble individual. 
Um, and look at Brutus' his response. You wronged yourself to write in such a case. Shame on you. Shame on you for writing and vouching for this, this criminal, this person. Our noble names who took down this tyrant. You are now vouching for a criminal doing something that's illegal, morally and ethically wrong. Okay, that's wrong. And you, you wronged yourself, sir. Uh, Brutus says, Cassius, you yourself are much condemned to have an itching palm, to sell and march your offices for gold to understand. So you've been known, you've been accused of taking bribes as well for giving offices and giving titles to people who pay for them. And so I have associated with an individual. My life has been changed forever. And if I could go back, he says in a little bit, down there at line 20, if I could go back in time, I'd probably want to change just because of the people and the decisions you're making and the people that you're associating uh, with. If you're vouching for this person, that makes that connection between those two people. And that connection between those two people can be connected from you, Cassius, to me. And I am a noble person, and I do not do that. And so that's where we see Brutus' uh, struggle. Remember March, the Ides of March. Remember, did not great Julius bleed for justice' sake? What villain touched his body that did stab, and not for justice? What, shall one of us that struck the foremost man of all this world, but for supporting robbers? Shall we now contaminate our fingers with base bribes? And so that's where we really see him struggling with this. What, what, you, almighty Cassius, why are you taking, you, you demean us. You bring us down from this pedestal that we have put ourselves on. Morally and ethically, we chose for the better of Rome. And look at what you're doing. Is this the type of rulers that we want in Rome when we take control and win in this, this war? Somebody that takes bribe? And so Brutus is very upset about this. Cassius, look at his response at the top of the next page, line 28, 29. Brutus baits me not, provoke me not. I'll not endure it. I will not have it. You forget yourself to hedge me in. I am a soldier. I, older in practice, abler than yourself to make conditions. So I'm more experienced. I'm older than you. I can make these rules and regulations. How dare you talk to me about these? this? I'm older than you. I'm better than you. Brutus, go to. You are not Cassius. Leave me alone. That, this isn't Cassius. You're speaking. You might be Cassius in form, but this is not you, man. What have you done with Cassius? So this is Brutus' struggle. Cassius goes on. Uh, Cassius goes, I am. You, I say you are not. Urge me no more, or I shall forget myself. Do not provoke. I don't know what I will do. Don't push me anymore, Brutus. I don't know what's going to happen. Have mind upon your hell. Tempt me no further. Kind of a threat. Don't push me, man. Don't push me. I'm not going to be responsible for what happens if you keep coming at me. Away, slight man. Is it possible? Hear me, for I will speak. Must I give way and room to your rash collar, to your quick temper? Shall I be frightened when a madman stares? So Brutus is his main focus here is this is not Cassius. What are you? And Cassius is offended. Like, of course this is Cassius. Cassius can't see his wrongs. He can't. He's struggling with that. But Brutus is just beside himself with how far his friend has fallen. And so he's really struggling with that. Cassius, oh ye gods, ye gods, must I endure all this? All this? I more. And so we are, I mean, this is a minus the fist, a vocal back and forth. I can't believe you're talking to me like this. What, man? What, how can you be like this? I'm not, I'm not doing anything wrong. Of course you're doing something wrong. This isn't the Cassius that I grew up with, that, that I did this stuff with. Man, you better watch yourself or I'm going to, oh, what, what are you going to do? I'm not going to listen. You, you're you going to listen to this. And so this is back and forth with, with passion. Um, Cassius, is it come to this? <laughs> you say you are a better soldier? Let it appear so. Make your vaunting, make your boasting true. Oh, you think you're a better soldier? All right, man. Let's man up. Let's do this. Let's find out who's better. Look at Cassius. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. He wronged me. Every way you wronged me, Brutus. I said an elder soldier. 
not a better. Because he did say that I was older, that I can make these decisions, blah, blah, blah. Brutus takes that as being, oh, you think you're better? You think you should leave? Fine, let's do this. And so you can almost imagine a threatening, challenging, grabbing your sword, duel type thing. And so, oh, no, because Cassius isn't, you know, he, he's, he's not as noble as Brutus, so we can probably say he's not as skilled as Brutus. Um, look at Brutus says, if you did, I care not. When Caesar lived, he durst not thus have moved me. He, when he lived, he didn't provoke me. He didn't make me this upset and angry as what you are doing now. And so we're coming to a head here um, where they ultimately are going to start to, uh, to resolve their, their tempers. Um, uh, page, uh, the next page, line 63-64. Cassius, do not presume too much upon my love. I may do that, I shall be sorry for. But don't think that just because we are so friendly that you can do and say what you think you're getting away with because I, I might do something that I will later regret. Whether that's right now or in a little while. Some choice will be made. You have done that, you should be sorry for. Follow along, line 65. You have done that, you should be sorry for. There is no terror, Cassius, in your threats. For I am armed so strong in honesty that they pass by me as the idle wind. So we see him taking the moral high ground. I am honest and virtuous, and you have separated yourself from me, and you can give me all these threats, and I'm not scared of them. I am too honest for any of it. This just washed right off of me. Washed right off me. I did send to you for certain. So we now we find out why Brutus is angry. Okay? Cassius comes, he's angry that this Lucius Pella was, you know, I vowed, I, Cassius, vowed for him, and you didn't do what you said, you, you didn't do what I wanted. Now we find out why Brutus is upset. Up till now, Brutus is just defending and saying how wrong Cassius was. Here's why Brutus, he needed help, he needed money, he needed gold, and he was turned down. I did send to you for certain sums of gold which you denied me, for I can raise no money by bio means, by heaven. I had rather coin my heart and drop my blood for drachmas than to wring from the hard hands of peasants their vile trash. So I would, you know, I, I would never take money from people and go and loot and take and pillage and, and get the money that way. I would never do that. That's wrong. That's not going to happen. Um, I did send to you for gold to pay my legions, which you denied me. Was that done like Cassius? Should I have should I have answered Caius Cassius? So if you had asked me, would I have answered that way? Would I have said no? When Marcus Brutus grows so covetous to look such rascal counters from his friends, so grubby coins from his friends, be ready, God, with all your thunderbolts. And so if I ever act and deny my friends like that, God, kill me now with your thunderbolts. I would never do what you did to me when I needed help for our cause and our armies. So my letter to you was much different than your letter to me. Your letter to me was, I need this man let off, even though he committed those crimes and was wrong morally and ethically, I want him to resolve. My letter was, I need money and gold for our cause and for our armies, and you denied me. Cassius response, I deny you not. You did, I did not. He was but a fool that brought my answer back. Brutus, Brutus have ribbed my heart. A friend should bear his friend's infirmities, but Brutus makes mine greater than they are. You should forgive your friend's faults. Have you ever heard of that before? If you truly love somebody, you should look past their faults. And that's what he's saying here. Brutus goes, I do not till you practice them on me. You love me not. I do not like your faults. A friendly eye could never see such faults. Cassius are on the next, you know, this is his, oh, woe is me. No one likes poor Cassius. Oh, how can you treat me so bad? Come, Antony, and young Octavius, come. So enemies, come find me. Revenge yourselves alone on Cassius, for Cassius is a weary of the world, hated by ones he loves. So hated by Brutus. Braved, challenged by his brother, Checked like a bondsman, like a slave, scolded like a slave. All his faults observed, 
set in a notebook, so written down, learned, and conned by rope. So all my faults written down and memorized by those that love me. Oh, come and kill me now. Oh, woe is me. Oh, I could weep my spirit from mine eyes. There is my dagger, so we can pull it out. There is my dagger, and here my naked breast within a heart, dearer than Pluto's mind, richer than gold. If thou beest a Roman, take it forth. I that deny thee gold will give my heart. Strike as thou didst at Caesar, for I know when thou didst hate him worst. Thou love his, lovest him better than ever thou lovest Cassius. Oh, woe is me. So even though you hated Caesar, the most you ever hated him, you probably still loved him more than you loved me. And so we can see how this friendship has fractured. And they had a fight. Everybody fights. You and your friends have probably had some disagreements that you have been able to work out over you know, some time. Probably not to the degree of this. But we see them breaking down at this particular point. Um, look at what Brutus says. He says, sheathe your dagger. So put your knife, comp, relax. So here is where we kind of, we've been building up a lot of intensity. Here we kind of calm down a little bit. And we're going to find out quickly on the next page. Brutus says in line 160, he goes, When I spoke that, I was ill-tempered too. So when you spoke that, things were, things were a little bit, little bit rough. Okay. Um, the next page we find out after a poet shows up, um, Cassius says on line 143, Cassius says, I did not think you could have been so angry. They're drinking, so they're calmed down. Oh, I'm sorry. That... I, things have been wrong. Oh, I didn't think you could ever get so angry. That, that, that was really scary. Yeah, go Cassius, I am sick of many griefs. No man bears sorrow better. Portia is dead. And so he finds out his wife is dead. Huh, Portia? She is dead. Look at Cassius' response. And this is one of those, it's not a funny line. But look at, but I find a little humor. He goes, how escaped I killing when I crossed you so? Upon what sickness? So how, your wife died and I provoked you to such anger and challenged you? How did you not kill me? I probably would have killed myself if we were switched around. What grief you must have. And we see that, you know, I said that that was poor. Think two years. Two years since she's seen her husband. He had to ride out of town. And she supported, she loved him. She was going along with the whole conspiracy and all that. She loves her man and for two years, and we will find out later what's, you know, she's been seeing people rounded up and killed and executed, anybody associated with it. She might think her husband's going to die and never see him again. She's crazy with love. So she kills herself. Um, and we see that the Brutus says, she was impatient of my absence. She was unable to endure my absence. And grief that young Octavius and Mark Antony had made themselves so strong, with this she fell distract. Okay, and her attendants absent, she swallowed fire. Swallow? How can you swallow fire? Well, she took burning. Have you ever seen her fire the the red embers at the bottom? When she was left alone, she took those and swallowed those. That seems like a very brutal way to go. Have you guys ever touched something that's hot and you're, oh, ouch, 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 and it blisters? Maybe you touched a pan or when I was a kid for some stupid reason I touched an exhaust pipe on a go-kart. Is this hot? Ow, yes, and I had to run a quarter mile home. I probably never ran a faster than 200 or 400 in my life. Um, but some small little burn, that really hurts. Imagine swallowing fire. You think when you're sick and you have a sore throat that that's really rough. And so she died by that way. So she went, I don't want to say she was crazy like insane asylum, but she, she couldn't endure his absence anymore. You think that that doesn't add a little bit of guilt to Brutus? Look at what we've done. Think back. If they had just listened to Cassius and killed Antony when they had a shot, or even let him live but not let him speak at the funeral, wouldn't things be different? More than likely? Would they have had to be run out of town? No. That wouldn't have happened. At that point, maybe something later on would have happened. But 
things would have been different. History would have been changed. And so that's a very, very important, uh, important moment. Um, the next page on uh, 845, line 200, right around in there. We, I'm going to jump a little bit because I want to speed through this. Uh, we're going to talk strategy. What should we do with our armies? Remember, we are in what is called the Sardis Minor, Asia Minor. It's over in Greece, which on a map is just east of Italy. Okay, On most maps and globes, it's about that far. So that's obviously not to scale, you know, but it's, it's about an inch away. Um, and so Brutus and them are deciding. The argument is, do we sit here and let the armies, our enemies, come to us, or do we go and meet them? And it's really interesting to see the two dynamics because we see some war strategy play out. Um, like 200 or so, uh, Cassius says, this is it. Tis better that the enemy seek us, come to us. So shall he waste his means. He will weary his soldiers, doing himself offense, whilst we, lying still, are full of rest, defense, and nibble. So let's wait. It will take them weeks and weeks and weeks to travel this far. And in doing so, they're walking, they're pulling all of their armor, weapons, they're wasting all of their food. Maybe it costs them money. It, it's, they're exerting a lot of effort to come to us. We're just sitting back relaxing, waiting for them to show. Let's just wait for that to happen. And so when they come, they'll be tired and we'll be fresh. So that's cast. Doesn't that sound like a good idea? I, I think so. Why waste all of our food and effort when we could just sit here and have the exact same battle that we're going to have if we had to walk two weeks for it? Um, Brutus says, good reasons must of force give place to better. The people twixt, so the people between Philippi and this ground do stand but in a forced affection. Forced affection. Oh, there's a footnote. What does that mean? Are friendly towards us because they have no choice. So the people between Antony's army and us, they're friendly to us because we're here. They're worried about what we're going to do. They're not loyal to us. So what's going to happen to them as Antony comes closer and closer and comes by those towns. They're not going to be nice to Brutus anymore. They're going to jump on board with the people that they want to be on board with, Antony and Octavius and Lepidus. And so as they march on us, they're going to get more and more people, stronger and stronger. Maybe get more and more food, so maybe they won't be as weak as you think. Maybe, given more time, given them an extra month of travel, they will be stronger and they will be harder to defeat. And so that's really where the struggle is. Do we go and meet them halfway before they can build up their army even more? Or do we wait and let them weary themselves out? So that's the, that's the two back and forth. That's, that, that's the struggle that they're doing. Um, um, and we'll see exactly what, uh, what they decide to do in, uh, uh, in, on the next page there. Um, Good, good, good. Brutus at the very bottom here, 215. He says, um, you must note beside that we have tried the utmost of our friends. So we've demanded the most that our allies can give us. Our legions are brimful. Our glasses are overflowing, metaphorically. We are at the strongest we can possibly be. We've got everything. And the enemy is getting stronger and stronger. We're not getting stronger. So we're at the, the height of what we can be at. So we need to fight now, not wait. And so it's decided, and Cassius finally consents and agrees that on line 225, he says, we'll along ourselves and meet them at Philippi. So we aren't going to sit, we're going to raise up camp, and we're going to go and meet them uh, at that halfway point. As they're coming to us, we will go meet them since we are at our max. And so that's ultimately um, what's going to happen. Uh, look at Cassius as he gets ready to, um, to leave down there. Uh, he says, oh, my dear brother, line 234. This was an ill beginning of the night. Never comes such division between our souls. Let it not Brutus. So this started out a horrible night. Please, let's never have this again. Let's keep our communication. And so we see this relationship kind of mended a little bit. They've aired out their grievances, and things are a little bit, uh, a little bit better. On um, the last two pages, go ahead and look at this. Around line 270. Um, Lucius has come in, his servant, uh, he's fallen asleep, everybody's asleep, but Brutus is still awake. And here we have a presence of a ghost. 
This is something that happens a lot in the tragedies of Shakespeare. Um, Hamlet. Hamlet doesn't know how his father was killed until he talks to the ghost of his father and finds out, spoiler alert, that his uncle killed him and is now the king. So the brother killed his brother and is now king. Um, you know, we see a ghost in a, the Julius Caesar in Macbeth, the scene that you'll have when you get to be seniors. Um, you know, there is a huge scene where we see Macbeth completely break down out of guilt for the person that he had killed when he sees that person's ghost. And so they are big, momentous moments of the plays, um, even though they show up once or twice and barely do anything and barely say anything, if at all. Um, but it's a, a supernatural moment that, that tends to show up. And remember, add this with the omens that we talked about um, before, and we definitely have a supernatural uh, quality playing uh, here. Um, line 276, when he sees the ghost, he goes, Ha! Ah, who comes here? I think it is the weakness of mine eyes that shapes this monstrous apparition. So maybe I'm too tired to see this. Oh, it makes my blood cold and my hair to stare, my hair to stand on end. So I'm, I'm freaked out. The ghost says, Thy evil spirit, Brutus, why comest thou? To tell thee thou shalt see me at Philippi. Well, then I shall see thee again, I, at Philippi. Why? I, I will see thee at Philippi then. So he doesn't come in and say much other than, you will see me again. You will see my ghost again. So we can look at this as a foreshadowing of, obviously, the battle that we've already said is going to happen at Philippi. But that, you know, there will be some vengeance, revenge, for what happened. So Brutus, this is, probably isn't going to work out too, uh, too well. But the battle is going to happen. Think back to what Mark Antony's huge blood, carnage, wrath, uh, speech was about where he said at one point that the you know Caesar the ghost of Caesar Caesar's spirit will come ranging out of hell with the goddess of war and revenge and carnage and then they're gonna fight and blood and all of that and so here we have the ghost of Caesar saying we're gonna see me again you'll see me at Philippi and so we can see that things are starting to uh, play out and lead up into uh, the wars that's going to uh, take place um, you know, in the next couple couple pages, but in the very short uh, Act 5. So, um, good. Any questions on Act 4? All of the exposition, all of the rising action has been building, 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 and now we're ready to have some fun and see what happens with this battle and see how things play out. Okay? <laughs>